Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to another live. Um, today, we are diving into um, how to organize your business. This is a topic that I have wanted to talk about for quite some time, um, and I'm just so excited to finally get a chance to talk to you all about it. Now, this is one where we're going to really be diving into how I organize my business. We're going to be talking about the six things that I organize on a monthly basis. We are going to be looking at monthly, how I get everything set up within my planner, all the different things that I do, I'm going to talk you through it. And then in Friday's class or in Friday's video, I should say, in Friday's video, you will actually see me do it. So while we're on live, I'm going to talk through the process in Friday's video. You're actually going to be able to see exactly what I do step by step in action. And so I thought that that would be a nice way for us to talk about the content and then for you to actually see how I do it. Then that way, you, as you are developing your own system, as you are setting up your own, it, it could be for work or for your own side hustle or your own business, as you are setting up your own system, this will help you basically set up all of your steps and all of the different things that you would like to do. If you are a member of the Organize You, if you are a member of the Organize You, I will have this class on our site along with the download that I use that you are able to add into your planner. It's going to be a Canva link. That way you can adjust and edit all of the tasks that I have and switch them out and make them your own. So hello, everyone everyone. Welcome, welcome. Thank you all for jumping on and putting where you are from as well. I see all of your comments and I really appreciate it. I really would also love for you to like this video as well. It does help me with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, we're talking about how to organize your business. This was one of the top things that I did that really helped me to um, start to actually make progress. I don't know if you are an entrepreneur yourself, if you have been working on side hustles, if you've been working at work nine to five and you are trying to get different things done, but you just can't finish all of the tasks that you have set ahead. You have all of these plans, but you never get them actually done. I have been there, and that is why we are talking about this topic today, because I realized that I had to have a system in place in order for me to actually get things done and make money within my business. So our biggest issue with trying to run our business or run our life, even money, whatever the case may be, is because we're trying to do it from memory. Our biggest issue is always trying to do things from our memory. I used to wake up in the morning and then I would sit down and then try and decide all of the things that I needed to do for my business. So as soon as I woke up, I would grab some coffee and then I would think, oh, what do I need to do today? And I would write down one really long to-do list. It would be a bunch of different things. I might have 25 things on the list. And then I'm saying, okay, these are all the things that I need to do today. I might get one or two things done, but it was kind of just thrown on there. And there was no real procedure or no real system to what I was doing. And then I would get super disappointed when I didn't get anything done. And here's the thing, whenever you are starting a business, especially I see you are a new entrepreneur, anytime you are starting a new business and you are a new entrepreneur and you're just starting to get out there, the first thing that you have to realize is that you are starting from scratch. So you don't have any tasks or any regular routines that are currently within what you already do on a daily basis, which means that if you don't have a system, if you don't have a business routine, if you don't set up a, a way that you are actually going to be able to complete all of things that you have on your list, then 
you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to end up being distracted by a bunch of other things that are going on. And what usually happens is you get frustrated in the process because you aren't completing the things that you said you wanted to complete. So I used to do this all the time. I would write this really long list. I would complete one or two things. I would never feel like it was enough. And then I would get frustrated and disappointed with where my business was going. I would always feel like, ugh, I'm not doing enough, I'm not completing enough, I'm not really getting anywhere. So all of this happens usually because we're trying to do it all from memory. We are trying to complete all of the things that we need to do or think about all the things that we need to do from memory, which means that we end up jumping from task to task because our minds jump from thing to thing. And so since our mind jumped from this thing you need to do to this thing you need to do to that thing you need to do, and it's jumping from business to home, to money, to family things, to relationships, to all of these different things, your mind is constantly doing this, which means now you feel like complete chaos is ensuing around you and you're not able to really get anything done. I can't get anything done because my mind is just so consumed with all the things I need to do, not just one area, not just business. Your mind is thinking about all the areas that you need to complete and how you need to complete them. So that is the biggest reason why you need this system. You need a business system, a business routine that you can put into place that gives you the same list that you need to do on a, a time frame so that you know you how what you need to check in on, how you need to check it, when you need to do certain things, at what time you need to do it, and you are not trying to jump from task to task in your head. And whenever you are doing things from memory, it will always be that way. It will always feel like you're all over the place. So this is the main reason why you need a system and why you need a routine and why we talk so much about routines on this channel and talk so much about systems on this channel. So Let's talk a little bit about my system. So my system is broken down into five different sections. And these are the sections for basically all of the systems that I have. Y'all know I live my life by life categories. I have about, I want to say it's nine categories um, that I have a system for. But every single one of these systems, all nine of my categories are broken down by these five time frames, which are daily, weekly, quarterly, monthly, and annual. So I have a, a list of things that I do under each one of these sections. So I have a list of things that I will do daily, a list of things that I'm going to do weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. And today we are talking about my monthly business system. We're going to be talking and diving into my monthly business system, but I do have a system or a routine for each one of these sections. And I do that for all areas of my life categories. I do that for my home. I do it for my family, my relationships. I do it for my money. I have for all of these, and I've, I've discussed my money routine on this channel. Um, I believe we've done the home one as well, but I don't think we've ever done the business one, which is why I'm super excited to talk about this one as well. But for each system that I have, for all nine categories of my life, I will dive into these five areas. We're always going to dive into all five. But this today, we're going to talk about the monthly part of my system under my business section. All right. So your routine matters. This is why we definitely need to have an overall routine. Like I said, I have to have routines associated with each and every area of my business to make sure that I am touching on all of these areas, right? We talked about it before, but if I would try and rely on just my memory, I would definitely miss some of these areas or I wouldn't do them in the time frame that I had decided that I was going to do them. So to make sure that I stay on top of all of these different things, to make sure that I um, 
And so just make sure that I stay on top of all of the areas that I have listed, all of the routines that I have listed, all of the tasks that I have listed. I make sure that I put them within a routine. I make sure that I put them within a specific list. So that's why we're going to dive into my monthly routine. All right. So first, let's talk about where and when, um, where and when of this. So I keep all of my business routines, I keep all of my business routines on paper. And I, I don't think that's a shock for anyone. I do not think it's a shock, but I just wanted to mention it just in case someone is brand new. For the most part, I do keep a majority of my routine, the things that I'm going to do, I do keep it within my business planner. So I have my business planner where I am writing down all the different things that need to happen um, on a specific basis, but I am keeping all of my routines either within my planner or in my notebook. So, you know, I have a notebook and a planner. And for my notebook, I keep all the different sections, all the life category sections. And for my planner, I do the exact same thing. That way I am able to chime in and see what is going on with my business at any amount of time. So, where it's always going to be within my business planner. It's always going to be on paper. I do have some aspects that I keep digital and we will talk about those and where I keep those things. But for the most part, everything is going to be on paper. When do I do this? I always do this particular routine the very last week of the month. So this is the last week of April where currently it's the 25th. Um, of April. This is the very last week. So this is the week where I am going to complete my business routine, which is why in the video on Friday, I'm going to share with you and show you exactly how I do the steps that I'm talking about today. But for, th for this purposes, just know that you need to set a time frame. You have to set a time frame for when you're going to complete your monthly routine. If you have a monthly routine, a quarterly routine, uh, an annual, even daily, you really need to decide at what point in time am I going to do this? So I normally complete these steps from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. every single day, the very last week of the month. So from Monday to Friday, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., I am working on the things. It's six areas that we're going to talk about today. So the reason I need the whole week is because it's a nice amount of things. And so usually I will dedicate, you know, two hours a day or the very last week to each one of these things to make sure that I am able to cover everything that I need to cover and I am being prepared for the very next week, all right? So, and of course, th this is a very, very good point. This is a very good point. I'm gonna show it real quick. But Q is the trick. My planner is always my Q because whenever I need to add a new month to my planner, whenever I need to add a new month to my planner, I know it's time for all of my routines. I know that at that point in time, I'm adding the new month, I need to look at my business routine. Whenever I'm adding the home section within my planner, I need to add, I need to add the, the section and then I add the routine or I go over the routine. I need to make sure that I am able to go over the routine. I see your questions. Remember that I am going to answer all your questions at the end of today's session. I am going to get to all of the questions. All right. So that's where keep it in my planner when the very last week of the month and it's from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Now let's get into the what. The very first thing that I am looking at, the first section that I am looking at of my business is what I call my CEO admin section. So this is where I am basically running the numbers. Numbers are a huge part of your business. This is what makes your business a business. This is how you know if you actually are making money. This is how you can get into the specifics and get into the details. So you know I am very transparent. So I have added my actual uh, QuickBooks screenshot from the last month on here as well. And I also added um, a little quick shot of my actual planner. 
But when I'm running my numbers, I am looking at a variety of things. I am looking at QuickBooks. And in QuickBooks, I am able to look and see my income, my expenses, um, what what. Um, what thing, what part of my income came from what areas? I am able to dive into those numbers and look and see what actually is working and what's not working as far as income expenses. How much did I spend on supplies? How much can I afford to pay myself or pay other workers? All of that is how what I am diving into when I am running my QuickBook numbers. The second set of numbers I am looking at is my YouTube analytics. So with YouTube, I am diving into the analytics page where I can see what videos did well, what videos did y'all like, what videos y'all didn't like. Um, should I make any adjustments or any changes to my content? What content is doing well? You guys know I talk a lot about planning, but I also talk about money. I talk talk about business. I talk about home organization. Since I talk about life organization, it kind of covers a nice number of topics. I will talk about goal setting, productivity, and even like just specific systems like we're talking about today. So a lot of times I will dive into my YouTube analytics to see what videos y'all liked versus what you didn't like. And then I am able to make better decisions on future content. The next one that I will look at is my Instagram insights. So for my Instagram, once again, same type of thing. I am looking at the numbers. What reels did well? What posts did not do well? Um, what did you like versus what didn't you like? And then that way I am able to produce more of that particular content. Same thing with TikTok. With my memberships, I am also producing downloads and different things for my members. And so I like to look and see what, what did they click on because they're getting everything within the membership. They're able to click on anything on the, on the site. They're able to download it. So since that's the case, I like to see what they like so that I can produce more of it and make sure that they are enjoying the membership. And the last one is my Etsy orders. Of course, I sell products. I sell planners and stickers on Etsy. So I do like to see what the sales are like, what products are doing well versus what products are not. So once again, these, this is, I'm tailoring it to my particular business, but at the, at the end of it, we are talking about you running your numbers. You need to know your numbers. If your numbers are based on clients, let's say you are a coach and you see clients on a daily basis, how often do you see clients? How many clients did you see? I know I see clients as well. Um, they aren't a big part because I only, I just started seeing clients one-on-one -on -one again, but like, I would want to know how many clients did I see this month? And how many products did you sell? Are you on your way to breaking even? Are you on your way to making a profit? These are different things that you need to know. And you only know this if you run the numbers. So the very first thing, usually I will do this around Wednesday or Thursday of the month because it's super close to the end of the month. And that's the time when I pretty much know, okay, this is probably all the money that I have made for the month. I can basically start to run my analytics and start to look and see how well I'm doing versus how I am not doing. So the first area that you need to organize, that you need to develop some type of routine around is your CEO slash admin area. And the first thing that I would do within this area is running all the numbers. Now you could list a bunch of other things under here as well, if you consider that your CEO admin section. For me, this is a really big part of what I would need to do on a monthly basis to make sure that I am on track. But the CEO admin is the very first section. The second section that I like to look at and review and add into my planner for my business is my projects and my deadlines. So projects are ongoing they are constantly coming up because a project isn't something that you just kind of can do in one day. 
This is something that's usually two or three or extra steps. It's going to take a little bit more time to actually complete all of these things. So since it's going to take additional time, I like to review them on a monthly basis to see and track my progress. So when I'm talking about progress, I'm currently writing a sec my second book. So this is something that I am kind of just keeping track of, seeing how I'm doing. Where Am I making progress? Did I meet my monthly goal for where I was supposed to be with my writing? Courses, another thing that normally takes a little bit more time. It's going to take longer than a month, but I'm going to keep track of the different projects or the, the different deadlines that I have for finishing or completing this course. And I also do brand collabs and affiliates. And so this is also the time where I am checking in on those particular things. So it's the it's the same thing that I'll do with um, affiliates and collab. Y'all know I, I I do collab with Notique a lot. I have a lot of her products. I love um, her stuff. And so a lot of times I am just going to check in on the collab and I might reach out to her, see how we're doing, how, how many sales, all of those different things are what that may look like. Any extra projects or any deadlines that I have coming up. So you could do this as the exact same thing for work projects, work deadlines that you may have, even if you have a nine to five, what are some long on long going projects that you have to complete? What are different things that you need to do? And are you keeping track of them? Are you marking down those deadlines? Because you need to add it to your monthly planner and just keep track of the different things that you need to do. Now, this also goes on my monthly spread when I am writing in my planner. So I will plan I will pull out my monthly spread and then I will write down the different things that I am supposed to have accomplished or achieved by a certain time frame. That's how I will work on this. The next thing is the third thing that I am keeping track of is my um, content, is my content, is my content. So content is a very, very big part of my business. <laughs> it is huge for my business. So, um, and it's because all of my business is mainly online. I produce uh, videos on YouTube. I do classes on YouTube. I do classes for my memberships. I do all of the different things I do is going to be online. So I have a, a very uh, strict content schedule where I am going to go live on YouTube every single Monday, and then I'm going to have a full YouTube video every single Friday. So I need to plan out all the different things that I am going to do for my YouTube lives and my YouTube videos. That's the very first place where I start. Now, this is the only content, like this is the only area where I am pulling from another place. You remember I told you that I do have a digital version of certain things. Because my content is so involved and because my content has to be planned out and I have to really think ahead for the entire month, I will, I will start this content planning within Trello. I will start the content planning within Trello. So I always, I have an ongoing Trello board. And whenever I am doing research, whenever I am looking up different topics, I will usually add that topic to my Trello board. That way I am able to kind of move things around and see when I want to complete a particular topic. So it starts off on my Trello board. And then once I have finished it, for the month, like right now, I might be planning content for the month of June. And I will just add things to my Trello board because I don't keep the month of June within my planner. I only keep the current month that I am currently working on within my planner. So for long-term planning, when I am planning far ahead, far in advance, and I'm thinking about what I want to post for Vlogmas in December, and I'm thinking about what I want to post next year and what the planner release content is going to be like, I will put all of that in Trello because Trello is where I can keep the long-term content that I need for months, months, months from now. But when I am ready to plan out the current month, 
I just pull up my Trello board. This is my Trello board. This is my Trello board. I saw that question. Um, I will pull up my Trello board. And once I pull up Trello, I will look and see move things around, make a commitment, like this is exactly what I want to do. And then I will write and transfer all of this information from Trello to my actual planner for the month. So on my monthly spread, I will have all of the content that I am planning for the month. So this is exactly what it looked like for April. And everything that is in red is a YouTube video. So as you can see, every single Friday, I have a red um, little sticker there or label that lets me know it's a YouTube video. If it's blue, then it's going to be for my membership. So I wanted to make sure that I have different things for my members set up. And then if it's yellow, it's something that's going to go on Instagram. So it's probably a reel or something like that. Purple is another type of event, meaning that it's probably something I am speaking at, but it's not my event. So I had I was doing another conference for someone else, and that's going to be in purple. And then green is live. And so green lets me know that I need to be on live. Red is going to be YouTube videos. Blue is membership. Yellow is Instagram. And that's how I just kind of keep up with different things that's coming up. But like I said, this would be months in advance. Whenever I transfer this information over, I pretty much say, okay, this is exactly what I want to do for the month. And then I say, I feel like I'm, so I'm solid on this, on this content. And then I transfer it over into my actual planner. And what I keep on my monthly spread of my planner is my content schedule. I will write out all the content that I want to do. This piece right here takes the longest time. This is definitely going to take the longest time. However, this will be the most helpful thing that you will ever do. <laughs> if you know what your content is going to be, if you know what you are going to post, what your you what your Instagram posts are going, even if you're not on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, if you write out what Instagram posts you're going to do, I like to do one reel every single day. And I like to have that reel up by like 10 a.m. So since I have a time frame and I want it up by 10 a.m., I could film all of my reels on a Monday and basically have them all done because I know I've already planned out every single reel that I'm going to do. I could plan out all my YouTube videos for the entire month and possibly record them all because I know exactly what I'm going to post and when I am going to post it. This piece right here, if you don't do anything else, especially if you are on um, social media, if social media is your business or you have an entrepreneur, all entrepreneurs need to be on social media. I just feel like if you're an entrepreneur, you got to be doing social media in some type of way because there's just such a big world out there and you can really connect with so many people just by putting yourself out there on Instagram and YouTube. But this piece right here, takes the longest. This one definitely takes the longest. This will probably take me about two days. Remember, I told you I have five days to complete all six of these. With my CEO admin, I could definitely complete that in one day. I could look at all my numbers, review everything, look at the income, look at the YouTube. All of that can be done in one day. This piece right here could possibly take me about two days. It could take me about two days to complete it. All right. So just know that to be the case. However, I absolutely love whenever I have, when, when I started this system, when I started the process of planning out my content and writing it down and keeping up with it, this one changed the game. This helped me to actually be way more consistent way more consistent with my content, which helped me to actually stay on top of my content, which in turn made me more sales, helped me grow my audience. It just, it, it all came back. So if you, if you don't take anything away from today's class, if you don't do any of the other steps that we have talked about, do this one, do this one. I promise you this one is my probably number one step. All right. So 
I put it on Trello. This is, um, and I can do a video. I don't have a video on this one. I did see that comment. I don't have a video on this one. However, this is um, something that I could do a video on or a class on. It is the way that I use Trello. It is a pretty easy way that I use it because I don't use all the intricacies of all the different things they have. I mainly am using it for the calendar and the description, like being able to kind of script out my videos. But we can definitely do a video or a class on that later. However, this is the next one. We definitely want to do our content. And this is kind of how I'll keep my content from time to time as well. Um, I will write my topics on my monthly spread of my calendar, but I also do have a notebook that is associated with my planner where I will jot down a bunch of different content ideas, script out my ideas, script out the different things that I want to do. I will script out where the video, what I'm wearing, what the video is going to um, be, how it's going to look, um, when it's going to post, um, if even down to my makeup. I will plan it all out because it helps me on filming day. It really, really does. So I will write all of that down as well. All right. The next section where I am diving into and looking at is going to be my services. So if you are a service-based business, if you are a service-based business, like I said, day one, I am looking at my CEO admin stuff, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., during that time, it's just CEO admin. Day two, I am looking, day two and three is going to be content. I'm looking at content. So this is Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and then probably Thursday is when I would do the money part where I'm um, uh, look, go back to the CEO and look at the finance part. But for my services, it's going to be from 10 a.m. on one particular day. The only the only um, one of these that take multiple days is probably content. Everything else I can do within one sitting, and I probably could do multiple things within that one time. So services, services is another thing that I provide. And if you're a service-based business, you definitely need to be looking at your services. You need to be looking at, if you take one-on-one -on -one clients, how many did you take in this past month? How many did you take in this past month? Was it compared to the month before? Are you improving? Are you taking on more clients? Did you see less? If you did, what could you do better with your marketing or your content that could help you out with your services? The other aspect of my business that I am looking at is my group coaching because you know I have a monthly membership group coaching program where everyone jumps on and I just try and dive in and see who, how many people are coming in on the live, how many people are watching the replays, are they really enjoying the content, can I look at the Facebook group, is there anything else that I could do that could be improving this? Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we are constantly improving our business. Yes, we are small business owners, we can't do it all. Definitely understand that, but I always try my best to always be constantly improving the, the system, the software, all of the different ways that I am able to get the content and the information out to my clients. Because at the end of the day, if you can't find the different things that you need to get organized, then it's going to be hard for you to actually use it. So I want to make sure that they are able to still um, connect with the services, be able to find everything that they need. And so that is what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the group coaching. I also have a five-week program for a lot of my business um, business ones. Um, if if this is like for my business owners who work with me one-on-one -on -one for a certain amount of time, um, then I check in on them. I will follow up with them. I will see where they are in their process and their steps, and then we can kind of go from there. All right, so. These are different things that I will do every single month within my services area, within my services area, all right? Products, products. So along with services, if you are a product-based business, you need to make sure that you are stepping and looking at your products, looking at your shipping time. I just had a major issue with my shipping time that I just rectified 
probably earlier this week, but you know, even with with COVID and all of the supply hold and all that sort of stuff, it was really slowing down my product production time and it was really upsetting me. But <laughs> we're finally getting back on track. Everything's starting to kind of come in and calm down. So I feel really, really good about that. But even with just making sure I was connecting with the people who were purchasing for my shop, I was answering all of their questions or all the DMs that I get, that I am creating new planner layers layouts and creating new things, downloads that people will want and like, and that could help them get organized. So all of these different things are things that I will do. I just restarted my Patreon stickers, my monthly stickers for Patreon. I just, I will set up new Etsy sticker release dates, which I just created. And all of this, once again, happens on a monthly basis because I'm just looking and seeing, okay, if I plan on creating a new sticker um, for this month, what is it going to be? When am I going to release it? How am I going to push it? How am I going to let people know that it exists? And when is that email is going to go out? So all of those different things to help me to basically think ahead of when I'm going to do it so that I actually do it. Could you see how, if you don't think ahead though, how either these things could sneak up on you or you could never do them? Like if I don't think about what new stickers I want to add to my shop and put a date on the calendar for when I am actually going to do it, can, could you see how I could just not do it? It would be so easy for me not to do it because I'm already busy. We're already doing a bunch of things. I already got so much going on. If I did not have this on a list, if I did not have this listed out as a full routine that I needed to complete on a daily basis, then it could be very easy for me to forget about all of this, right? Like it could be super, super easy. So this is why you definitely need to um, really, really dive into the, all of these areas that we are talking about, because when you dive into them, when you think about them, and when you write down a list of the different things that you need to do, then it helps you to create that routine that you need to do on a monthly basis. And with this particular routine, I have it, I have it as a note within my phone, and I also have it as a list within my notebook so that I can check it off. I will print this list out every single month, check it off, make sure I have done everything, and then I will print out a new list next month. But it's just to make sure that you are constantly doing these things, all right? And the last area, the last area is systems. So with my systems, I like to check in and see how am I doing everything that I'm doing and are my systems currently working? As you know, I was on Patreon for quite some time with my monthly membership. And then I decided to switch. And at the end of the year, in, in December, I decided to move over to Kajabi. Well, the reason I decided to move over to Kajabi is because I was sitting here probably in the month of October, I think it was. In the month of October of last year, I was sitting, I was doing my system review, and I realized that there were so many limitations to the current system that I was using with Patreon. There were so many different things that I couldn't do. I couldn't allow my members to easily access downloads. I couldn't get you past classes. I couldn't help you like book with me a one-on-one. -on -one. I couldn't, there was just so many different things that I couldn't do. I couldn't group the classes together and help you to easily find information. We couldn't commune, like there was no community page where all of us could talk. There were just so many different things that I could not do that I ended up being like, I need to switch the system. I need to find a way to switch the system. But even in thinking about that, trying to get so many people, because it was like 125 people that were currently members on Patreon, and I was trying to move them all over to this new system, it took a procedure. I had to add a, a process in place. Okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make sure that they get this information? Yes, I could just post it online, but a lot of people might get missed or mixed up in the move. And it was 
was a very, it was still a process to get everyone to move. But overall, because I had a plan in place, because I had a system, because I was sending out emails and letting everyone know what's going on, and we did an entire series during that time, it helped me to make the system change easier. So when you're reviewing your systems, you're trying to make sure that the systems that they have, the systems that you have in place are currently working for your clients. That if I have a system in place, I want to make sure that when my clients go to this system, they're easily able to find everything. Nothing is frustrating them. They can easily access what they need. They can access me. They can access the information. They can find the classes. They can easily download. They can easily print. Everything is super easy for them. And so once you do that, the easier you make it, the easier it will be for them to actually join in on your membership or your, your service or your product or whatever it is. It will be super easy for them to join in and it will be super easy for them to actually decide to pay you or actually decide to buy whatever you have. So you just want to make sure that you are doing this on a consistent basis. All right. So those are all of the systems. So those are all of the ones that I do on a consistent basis, my entire routine. So my routine of systems, just in case you missed it, products, services, content, projects and deadlines, and admin. So these are all the different things that I do on a consistent basis every single month, the very last week of the month. These are all the things that I do to make sure that I stay on top of all of the areas. Like I said, if you want to see, if you want to see like a step-by-step -step process of how I do this on a weekly basis or like throughout the week, but I think on when you see the video, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to try and do all of them on the same day so that I don't have to um, try and stop the video and restart on the next day. I'm going to try. We will see. It might be a two day thing, but all in all, I really want to walk you through the process and showing you how I do all of this. So this will be on Friday's video. For, so check out Friday's video on my channel, exact same time as this class, 4 p.m. Central. And that is when I will show you exactly how I do everything that we have talked about today, all six of the steps. All right. So let's get into some of your questions. Let's get into some of your questions. I tried to start as many as I possibly could. All right. Do you have a business coach? How do you go about finding one? What qualities do you look for? So very good question. I have had a few um, over the past three years. I have had a nice number of people because just because, you know, I, I will look for systems or different things that basically tailor to what I am looking for. Before I launched my course, I found someone who was teaching on courses. And that was, um, what's her name? I, I'm going to have to look up her name. But I, I, I found different people who were doing different things. Oh, it was Danny, uh, Danielle Lee, I think is her name. Um, and she had a course, Danielle Leslie, Danielle Leslie. Um, but she had a course on how to create courses, right? So it was, literally a course on how to create courses, how to set up your course, how to basically make it streamline it, what you should use, all of those different things. And so her course, like her course on how to create courses helped me to create my course. And so I did the same thing with multiple things. When I started coaching, I did Vanessa Lau's program. And with her program, I learned how to tailor my um, one-on-ones and my coaching to make sure that I was actually coaching in a strategic manner, that I had a setup that would work for my clients. So I have had multiple course uh, uh, coaches 
for different things. It really just depended on what I was looking for. And the main thing that I would look for in a quality of the coach is basically their overall success with that particular thing. So if you are talking about, you know, blowing up as a coach, I need to see that you are actually a coach, right? Not just someone who's just teaching about coaching. You have like actually done coaching for quite some time. And then the next thing that I would, the quality that I would look for is to make sure that I felt like the, the program would specifically help me. So I looked at all the different things that they were offering, looked at what was going to be the end goal of that particular program. And then that helped me to figure out if I felt like I was going to be a good fit. All right. So that is what I did. Um, if you missed working on your monthly routine on the day and time that you have a set aside, do you just skip it? I do not skip it. I do not. So what I would do if I missed a particular day, let's say I had it it's scheduled on a Monday from 10 to 12 and then something happened and I couldn't do it on Monday. If um, I would just kind of keep going with my week, whatever I had scheduled on Tuesday, I would do it on Tuesday. But Sunday is always my reset day. So on Sundays, if you've ever looked at my planner on a Sunday, I never have anything really scheduled other than church. So I have church and then my entire day is full free. You know, I don't really do much on a Sunday. Saturday is usually cleaning, but for the most part, Sunday is a reset day. So when I call it my reset day, it means that I look at everything that I was supposed to do in the last week and I try and squeeze it in or fit it in on a Sunday. And because it's a full day where I really try my best not to make any plans, if I can, I really will try my best not to make any plans so that it can be a real relaxing like or catch up day. Like I can just be catching up or I could just be relaxing and doing nothing. Right. So I but I don't skip it. Even if I have to go into the next week, I, I, I don't skip it because I really need to do it to make sure that I'm staying on top of all the things that I need to for my business. So that's how I do that. All right. If you don't have QuickBooks, can you do the same in a finance planner? You definitely can. You definitely can. The only reason why I do not keep my um, all of my financials for my business within my planner is because I I my business outgrew me being able to keep it on paper. So originally, I had two separate planners, two separate budget planners. One was for business. One was for um, my home. But now I only keep my home one within my planner. And that is mainly because my business had grown to a place to where I needed to run payroll. I needed to be able to produce numbers pretty quickly. I had to do more analytics. Like I had to do stuff in a very quick manner. And I could not do that on paper. I just couldn't do it the way that I needed it to be done. Now, I still keep a lot of things. Even for my business, I will write down things financially that I need to put into QuickBooks. So because I am just such a paper person, but when it comes down to just running the reports, I do use QuickBooks, but you can definitely do the exact same thing because all I'm looking at is my income, my expenses. How did I do overall for the month? I'm looking at profit margins and all of that. And that can still be done on paper. It can be done in Excel. It can be done on QuickBooks. Just depends on what you want. All right. Um, new book. Yes, <laughs> I am currently writing um, my second book, which is actually going to be more on these types of systems. So we're going to be talking more about organizing money and all the other categories of our lives. Um, what were the last things listed under your content section? Ooh, let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, because I'm not sure. I might make it to where you can just see. Let me hide your content. Okay. Um, 
under my content. So I am going to look at my Trello board. I'm going to look at my YouTube video, Instagram reels. That's my shorts, my TikTok, all of the different things. And then I'm going to create membership content. So that's everything that is on this board. So I will look at, you know, my live for, and my actual YouTube videos. I will look at membership content, which is in the blue. And then I will figure out what my Instagram reels and shorts are. So everything that is on this board is what I am mainly figuring out and planning out for the full month. And that also includes any additional events that I might have that may either aid or interrupt the content that I am currently planning. So this is where I am just kind of keeping everything so that I am able to see exactly what I need to do and when I need to do it. This is super, super helpful. Probably the number one thing that I do on a monthly basis that helps me out. All right, let's see. Um, do I, oh, I don't have a video on Trello, um, but like I said, we can definitely do a class. We can do um, a class or a video, whatever y'all would like, because I, I love Trello. I, I feel like Trello is way more simple than like Notion or anything like that. Um, I just mainly use it in order to keep track of the content that I have. And then if you if I was able to click on one of these cards, then I, I am also able to break down my scripts and I'm also able to break down where I am in the process. So if, if y'all can really see this board, then you can see as I check off things, it kind of scratches it out because it lets me know that I have already completed that particular thing. And then if it's something that I didn't complete, I can move. I can easily like drag, click on it and drag it to another date. So let's say it's something where I changed my mind because I do change my mind very often when it comes down to my content. So that's why I like to start off here and then that way I can move things around and then I am able to, after I move things around, I am able to adjust and decide, okay, I'm, I'm, I believe that this is exactly what I'm going to do and then I add it to my planner. That helps me to avoid adding a bunch of white out to my planner because I would be whiting out everything. All right. Um, any ideas on how to structure or plan content section for a new entrepreneur during their t-shirt business on Etsy or Shopify. So um, if you are brand new, the very first thing that I always say is write down, you wanna write down a full list of what your potential client needs. What do they need? What is the ultimate goal for your product? So let's say we're talking about a t-shirt business, right? So your t your client is probably looking for a certain type of um, comfort. So you could talk about comfort. You could talk about the, the material, the stretch, the ease of being able to purchase your products. If it's certain quotes, you might want to dive into what those quotes mean and how they could apply those quotes to their life if it's on a t-shirt. But you definitely want to give them a full feel an emotion of what this t-shirt is going to help them out or help them to do. Um, and even, it may even be as easy as just showing it in different aspects and different ways, you know, like even with my planner, many times with the planner, initially you may have not realized all the different things that you could do with a planner until I showed you hey, let me show you how I use this planner to plan my money, to plan my time, to write down all the things that I need to do for my kids and for my family, how I use it to organize my home, how I use it to stay on top of my health and my personal development, how I am able to read a bunch of books and keep track of all of my goals and check off the different things that I need to do on my routines. Showing you how I am able to use this planner to accomplish all the different things that I want to accomplish is what helps me to actually be able to sell the planner because I, I'm telling you how I'm able to use it and how it's improving my life. So think the same thing about the t-shirt. What is this t-shirt going to do? And we're not talking about 
just oh it's just a t-shirt it's a no you really want to dive into the real meaning of how you're going to help people like this is not just about oh i'm just going to make money just doing this we really want to think about how can we help people with this particular product what is the ultimate goal and if your t-shirt makes people feel so much better and they feel at peace they feel like they have comfort they're able to wrap you know and put the shirt on and they just feel amazing about themselves then talk about that you want to talk about all the aspects that's really going to let them know and let them feel how this particular product or how this service is going to improve their life. So that's the that's the goal. You really want to think about based on your content, what can I do or what can I say that's going to help them understand what this t-shirt will do for them? Because that's what I like to do. I'm like, okay, I believe wholeheartedly in organization, like with all my heart. I live this stuff on a daily basis and I truly believe every single thing that I talk about. And so, you know, once I am talking about being organized and, you know, I'm really saying, okay, no, this is going to improve your life because it definitely improved mine. And so I want to help you get there as well. So you want to do the same thing with anything that you're selling, any product, any service. Um, all right, let's see. Can you teach on content creation? I can, I definitely can. I love talking about content. I love looking up. One thing about content as well is if you can, um, if you can definitely do, look different things up on Google or ask as many people as possible, what are their, interest if they are your potential client right so i have asked some of my friends like what would it look like for you to be organized or what it it would what would it look like you know for you to stay on top of your organization process what do you feel like is the number one thing that's keeping you from being organized and just me talking about all of that you know over and over and over again helps me out so much so that I am able to um, stay on top of all of the content that I know that they would like. I know that they're going to like it because they're the ones that's asking for it. And I know that they are searching for organization. All right. Let's see. Remember to put hashtag Q, y'all. If you have a question, please put hashtag Q so I can make sure because I'm just like lightly scanning, but I'm not reading. My email address, it's Elena at theorganizedmoney.com. So I'm putting it in the comments so that you are able to message me. But that's my email address. Do you use digital planning on the go or just your physical planner? I only use phys physical planning. Um, when I use my digital planning, it, digital planner or mainly Trello um, or even Google, I will use Google on the go. Like, let's say if someone says, hey, I need to book an appointment with you or I need to do something next month, I will pull out my phone especially if it's a month ahead of time, because that's where I plan out the future. Whenever you think about digital in my, whenever I think about a digital form of planner organization or anything that's digital, nine times out of 10, if I'm going to plan digital, it is because it's in the future. And in the future for me is anything further out than a month. If it's in the current month that I'm currently in, then I will write it in my physical planner. Other than that, everything else has a digital format. So I use Google Calendar for all of my um, future dated appointments and meetings. I use Trello for all of my future dated content. And I use Evernote for any future notes that I know I'm going to need to reflect back on. And I do have a notebook and I do have my physical planner. But when we're talking about long term, I want to make sure that I can find the information. And so I will put that in digital because I know that I don't have the current month. I don't have the next month within my planner. So that's how I 
use digital. All right. Um, your organized money membership fees is quite a bit they have a discount this month. So I, I did do um, a discount in the month of December, but I am currently not. I did keep it because at one point I was looking at switching it to $30 a month. However, based on feedback, everyone, you know, telling me um, I did keep it at $25 a month. Now, the reason it's 25 is because we do four weekly live classes every like every single Thursday. I go live. We have a private podcast. I give you access to all of the downloads, including my budget planner download, my, my, my life planner download and any other download that I create. So even future downloads will always be free. And like the Canva link for today's class, it's all within there. And I started to divide all of these different things up to where I only had my sticker membership or I only had the downloads. And then I only had, you know, just the live classes and make it different prices so that it was um, affordable for, or, you know, it was less, it wasn't $25 a month. But most of the people, when I did the poll, ask for it all to be together. They rather it all be together so that they can just pay the one price that one time instead of having to pay all the different prices. So that's why it's set up the way that it is. Um, that's why it's set up that way. <laughs> but I also have my DIY classes. If you wanted to just um, check in on any of the DIY classes, that's like $19 a month. I have my how to start planning your life class and I also have my budget class to where you can kind of work it on your own. You get access to all of the videos and you are able to just um, jump on and take any one of the DIY courses. And I am planning on adding more DIY courses in the future for that $19, $20, $25 dollar range to help you all out. All right. How do you overcome negative talk from others when you are doing what works for you to keep your life on track? Ooh, that is a good one. Here's the thing. Whenever we are talking about um, you're, you're keeping your life on track, you are trying to do different things that will help you out. You definitely want to make sure, like put it on the list of self-care. It is self-care. Anytime I do something today that's going to help out the future me, I am taking care of myself right now and I'm taking care of future Elena, right? So if you want to make sure, if you hear negative talk about anything that you are doing that's keeping your life on track, you have to find a way to block that out. It may just be ignoring phone calls. It might be just like trying to silence the naysayers, doing what you need to do, moving away, calling less, having less contact, whatever the case may be, but you gotta protect that. You have to protect that mindset because motivation is such a hard mindset. It's so easy to lose really, really quickly, especially when someone is discouraging us. So we definitely have to protect it at all costs. The number one way that I have found to protect myself, especially if someone is constantly telling me what I should or should not be doing, is basically to not be as available, <laughs> to not be as available. Like, can't just call me and I'm going to just sit on the phone and listen to all the negative talk all the time. So um, distance is very, very helpful. Um, would you ever be able to go over how to get an LLC or if you ever need an LLC? I Yes, we could definitely talk about that. I can put that on um, one of our classes or a YouTube channel as well. Now, myself, I, I do have an LLC that is taxed as an S Corp. Um, and with, but, but I do believe if you have a business, you want to set up an LLC. You definitely want to set it up as an LLC because it just helps you so much um, with having good structure, have a separate bank account, have a business bank account. You definitely want to organize it properly. And that's definitely something that you want to do that way. All right. Um, Google Calendar can be used instead of Trello. Yes, yes, definitely. You definitely could use Google instead of Trello. Definitely, definitely. 
Um, can we keep 14? Well, the only thing is, is Amazon's not coming on live every single Thursday. <laughs> So uh, not right now, but you can definitely do the DIY ones because they, they will definitely help. I have several ideas for a business, but struggle making it feel unique to me. How can I move past copycat syndrome? Here's the thing. And I'm going to tell you this, Alicia, but I promise you it's for everyone. No one can be you. No one. You know how many people do planning and uh, money content? Like everyone does this. It's all over YouTube. So many people do what I do. But like I feel like only I can be me. And even when I'm talking to you all, I talk to you as I would normally talk. I, you know, the, the things that I'm doing in my planner, I actually do them and I use them consistently every day. And whenever I don't feel, have my planner, I feel completely lost. Like whoever connects to you will connect to you because there are going to be some people who like, I, I know it to be a fact. Some people absolutely love my content. They love every single part of it. They love the planners. They buy all the stuff. They buy every single course. They buy my books. They just support, support, support. And I'm so incredibly grateful. And then I have people who are like, girl, I don't need all of this. This is way too much. This is too much. It's not oriented. Oh, no, I could just use Google. I could just use digital planning. I, you're going to have both. You're definitely going to have both. But when we're talking about about copycats, no one can copy you. No one can be you. So the way you explain things, the way you set things up, the way you talk about the things that you're passionate about, the way you're going to talk about your business and your idea, once you settle on what you love and once you settle on that business idea, run with it. Because no matter what anyone else does, no one is going to say it the exact same way you say it. No one's going to do exactly what you do. You will always be unique, which means that it doesn't matter who else is selling it, who else is doing it. You will always be different. All right. Um, yes, yes, it is. They did change their name of Trello. They did. They did. They did change the name of Trello. The DIY classes are on Teachable. They are on Teachable. Um, and I can, let me see if I can find it real quick, but they are on teachable so that you are able to get access to, and right now you can get both of them, I think for like $37 or something like that. Um, so I'm going to post that here. Yeah. So you're able to click on that link and then you can see, the the course that I have now I think that one is the how to start planning your life but then there's another one for budgeting as well and then that way you can kind of do it on your own time but if you are looking to like create the life categories that we kind of talked about and set up a, a planner in that way then you want to do the how to start planning your life one because that's the class that aligns with that all right so Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. I hope that this class really, really helped y'all. Y'all had a lot of questions, so I hope that I answered them all. But of course, if you have any additional questions, please email me. I'm going to put my email in the chat box one more time. You can email me. You can definitely jump on. And I also do um, business organization services as well. So if you wanted to jump on one-on-one -on -one for an hour and talk specifically about your business and talk about what you are trying to accomplish and get a bunch of ideas, then you can definitely book a one-on-one. -on -one. I believe I left that in the description box as well. And if you're watching the replay, it definitely should be there. All right. So thank you all so much for joining me. And I will see you guys in Friday's video. Don't forget, Friday's video is going to be um, the actual walkthrough or the look where you can actually see me doing all the things that we talked about, all six of the things that we talked about in my planner. And I thought that that would be super helpful instead of just shooting out a bunch of information at y'all. I'm telling you all the information. And then on Friday, you get to see it in action, right? So I thought that would be helpful.
So y'all let me know how you like the Friday's video and I will see you on next Monday. All right. Bye guys.